Hell, uh, yeah, you know, there, lately there's been going on stuff going on stuff in boxing that I want to say something about uh, ah yeah well first of all uh, I'm really appalled and shocked that the fight that's gonna happen uh, this weekend between uh, which is no and <laughs> by no means you know, a real like boxing serious boxing event between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and John Gotti III, who is not even a boxer, really, I mean, for <laughs> for real. That fight is going to be a pay-per-view fight. I just can't believe it, you know. Yeah, man, this is just becoming too, too much, too ridiculous. First, we had, you know, all these... Uh, Logan and Jake Paul fight, um, fights that were made out to be much bigger than they they were. I mean, even Logan Paul versus that other that guy asshole Dylan Dennis. <laughs> even that was made actually a pay pay per view, even though it wasn't that expensive, but still, it is ridiculous. And of course we had Jake Paul fight Tommy Fury, <laughs> and now Mike Tyson seems to be the next. <sighs> what is going on? I just I would like to know. <laughs> the problem is that these fights, who are, which are just merely recreational, let's say, or curiosity fights you know like sideshow attraction kind of fights really they are given too much space and too much you know credit in the, the media by these promoters and all this bullshit you know man <laughs> I mean Jake Paul in uh, he may even be a decent boxer for somebody who who is who's whose main occupation and claim to fame was being a YouTuber. So but still you know and at the same time we have these fights going on in places like you know certain uh, you know Latin American countries and Russia and you know and nobody knows about it because it's not you know, sp sponsored by these big corporations and, you know, media platforms and, like, the zone and what, whatever, what not. I mean, uh, really, this is, uh, has become too much about show business. I really am really frustrated that this is, being considered serious or being given anyway the the attention that only you know world class boxing should have yeah i understand it does attract a lot of attention in the media however play, like platforms like the zone should should not be they have no place airing these matches like the Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis disgrace, you know, the farce that that, that fight was and, and ended. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, the only satisfaction I got there was seeing, you know, that creep Dennis get, get some punishment, you know, in that fight, <laughs> get bruised up. So that's the only satisfaction. But yeah, I mean, come on, this was just, why give such people at all? Like, isn't it bad enough we have the, the UFC, and which is a cesspool of these creeps, these horrible, you know, people, like, who embody and re rep represent, represent the very idea of toxic masculinity 
And now, you know, there's, there's so much of that. I see more and more in boxing as well. You know, boxing, while, while always trash talking has existed, you know, ever since Ali, anyway, uh, for sure. <laughs> You might say he was the first, well, he wasn't really the first one, but he was the first guy to, you know, make it popular, anyway. He wasn't the first guy to talk trash, like, for instance, in 1962, Benny Parrett, he called uh, Emil Griffith gay in Spanish and paid, paid for it with his life, so... Uh, it wasn't that a uh, big enough warning to people <laughs> not to engage in such trash talk. But uh, yeah, man, it's just... I'm really appalled, appalled. <laughs> I'm really disgusted and... Yeah, disgusted for boxing. I'm, I'm ashamed as a, such a long-time boxing fan and somebody who has written and... and and keeps writing about the sport and uh, and discussing it in podcasts and stuff and uh, yeah, like uh, also you know the the other thing I want to address is the the sudden uh, let's say interference or a sudden rise in stature in this in the in the sport of. Uh, Sheikh Turkey Al Al Sheik, I believe that's his full name. And uh, what he may do for boxing. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I would have preferred preferred it if uh, we could watch all, all those fights, let's say in UK. But UK, you know, now with that Sky Sports and all that bullshit, you know. If you don't want to pay, you know, for that, for their ridiculously high, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, subscription, or if you don't live in UK, you can't have, a, you know, that tool, I won't mention it anyway, for maybe my video will get censored. <laughs> so, yeah, and... If you can't pay, you know, here where I live, it's always a different ch fucking channel that's, that sends every of those fights, you know, in that Sky Sports covers in UK. So uh, <laughs> I have to go online and find some fucking streams, and that's so fucking frustrating. I got a curse because it really pisses me off, you know. And uh, Sky Sports is not a good thing. Because Sky Sports and not the Zone, the Zone should be covering all those fights, all right, all the best fights, but they are not focusing enough on uh, on Europe, on UK. Instead, they are focusing on USA and on uh, Saudi Arabia, and that is not very good. But at least I, who live in Europe. Don't have to wait till fucking five, six o'clock in the in the morning. Don't I don't want to stay up anyway. I don't stay up. I'm not crazy. I don't want to ruin my sleep pattern. But uh, yeah, so at least that there are only one hour ahead of us. So I can watch those fights in Riyadh, wherever it is, in uh at uh. A more a regular time, like, you know, I don't have to stay up so late, all right, and that's a good thing, and, uh, yeah, but I wish, but, yeah, UK, you know, Europe, you know, they, 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 they are so fucking difficult, they, they always make such a big, big deal out of all this stuff, and, uh, yeah, so that's why I guess it's much easier to make all these big cards over there in uh, that country where there's only, you know, one big, you know, big boss who says, get me those fights here, that's all, that's all it takes. He doesn't have to go through a 
whole like uh, army of these assholes from this boxing board and that you know, certification whatever you know and uh, the TV deals and TV whatever so license licensing and yeah that's so ridiculous in the Western world you know how difficult it is to make the big fights happen really. and all these cancellations of course and then you know so many big fights were cancelled and had to be postponed and yeah I'm now actually fearing that uh, there will be more of that like you know but I, I don't dare to say it out loud you know it's superstition but uh, yeah man and uh, by the way I gotta now you know I gotta give you a <laughs> a speech people who watch me i i feel like my boxing videos aren't appreciated enough definitely so for a while i have actually thought about not doing them it was like you know they get so few views fuck them you know like fuck you <laughs> youtube and the horse you rode in on yeah so, uh, but uh, yeah, I just, I just like doing them. That's the, that's the problem. I like, I enjoy doing them. I just wish more people would watch them. You know, I make a video where I talk about how, how you know, all the upsides and advantages of living by yourself versus being married, and that one gets like. 400 something views 500 I don't know while a, a video about a really good boxing card or night <laughs> it gets maybe 50 60 views 70 at best sometimes not even that and I gotta say that pisses me off anyway people it does but now back to the boxing the main topic the subject <laughs> yeah anyway <sighs> yeah is it a good thing that a turkey or a sheik is now you know becoming more of a force in boxing yes all right yes i was just i what i wanted to say before earlier was just that i wish because Europe has a far richer boxing tradition than the Middle East. Like, Middle East has not, you know, we are talking about modern boxing, not the, the ancient, you know, pugilist, uh, you know, sport. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, this kind of boxing, competitive. Europe has a far richer tradition, but, alas... The so these guys that are run this so fucking dumb and corrupted and fuck them you know that's all I want to say fuck you assholes so all right I say all right if it's gonna be different but the problem is still even if it's in Saudi Arabia the same fucking judges I have noticed are there also they are not from Saudi Arabia they are not from Iran they are not from Turkey or somewhere like that but they are from Europe from Italy Spain France Germany England whatever and they can be also pretty biased sometimes unfortunately so yeah I mean uh, but still it is a good thing all right Let's not make this video any longer than it has to be. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to finish with the, this last... I saw this message from Oscar De La Hoya to Canelo <laughs> yesterday. That was a riot. These guys really, really hate each other, man. And yeah, he was... Uh, Oscar was giving it to him for being rude to Turkey and... Uh, not wishing to speak to him and uh, because he obviously wants to make a fight uh, and Oscar said he 
things that is because Turkey would try to make him fight Benavides, who he obviously has been ducking for a while now, for several years. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Benavides was a, a force, a name before COVID. Let's face it. So he could have fought him already in 2019 or something, 18 maybe. You know, so, But especially now, after 21, 22... 23, that fight should have happened by now, but it didn't, unfortunately. So, yeah, if, but, yeah, Canelo is being a little, I kind of sympathize with him when he had that big altercation with uh, Oscar uh, before the Mungia fight. And I I understand that Oscar isn't exactly a model, like a promoter or, you know, but... Uh, I think here he is right. I must agree with him. Because Canelo has been ducking Benavides, and now Benavides is what, uh, in another division, along with David Morel, another big potential candidate for uh, dethroning Canelo. They are both in 175, but still I can see a fight happening, maybe even between those divisions. Maybe at a catch rate, maybe... And, uh, yeah, so uh, why not? But, yeah, I mean, it's not good, Canelo. Don't act like that. Don't behave like that. You got to, you know, talk to Turkey and see what can be made, what kind of fight. And uh, this is about your legacy. You're no longer 26 or something, you know, boy. I mean, sorry, I mean, <laughs> uh, brother. You're no longer so young. This is, you're going to retire, you know, like, <laughs> any time now. I mean, you, he has been active since, you know, he's been champion since 2010, for crying out loud. That's 14 years ago, like, when he was 20. So even though he's 34 now, it's, an, it's not a young 34 in boxing terms, so you would think he does, doesn't have more than maybe three more years left or something, I don't know. He's been in so many hard fights as well, the Triple G once, and yeah, you name it, you know. But uh, so you want to think about going out, you know, in real, in a proper fashion, instead of, you know, being remembered, oh, my last fight was I beat Berlanga or whatever, you know, somebody like that who, who never beat anybody worth a damn, you know. Because I think about more, I care more about not losing again and, you know, then, you know, securing my legacy as one of the greatest ever, you know. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That was pretty much all I had to say. I hope this guy can do something to fix boxing because it definitely needs fixing the the... The machinery, you know, the wheels are, it's not oiled well enough, all right, that machinery, it should be, it needs oiling more, all right, bye.